And then what about the kind of the, you, know, you talk about the fall in love people, right? So you got that, you're going through decision process, you know, those people, but then what about the people that you've never met? You kind of, you know, how do you figure that out, Roy? Yeah. So, um, uh, Again, let's differentiate, right? We, we sit in front of our champion and the people who are influenced by the champion that they pull into the meeting. And they're, they're the ones who are going to fall in love either with us or our solution or the vision that we have. And then there's a bunch of people that either need to check boxes or give their approval. And, and we need to make sure that we align to their objective and we speak in a, in a, in a business impact language so that yeah. when they make a decision that is not emotional, um, right. And somebody in their team wants to buy a tool, wants to buy a capability. Um, they, they don't know the vendor. They've never seen the product. They need to look at, uh, at a case and say, OK, that makes sense to me. If I spend 200K here and I gain a million a year and it solves me a problem that aligns to the number one priority that my boss tells me, that's a worth spending. Right. And, that, and so if we speak that language, we can sell effectively to people who are not in front of us. Totally. Uh, and then. Uh... Oh, so the value selling engineer role, right? So um, it's kind of come on the scene kind of five, 10 years ago, you know, kind of a boutique niche thing. You help kind of automate, automate their job, but now it's kind of really falling over into the kind of pre-sales customer success. Nadav, how do you see that uh, shaping out now? Uh, so we see many, many organizations recruiting value engineering leaders nowadays, and it feels like many of the sales engineers in the future, like I think that they're unofficially the value uh, sales right now in many organizations, but I think that it's becoming an established practice, um, partially because this is the next natural evolution of this market. And there are a few companies in the segment that have kind of took programmatic approach about value sales. So I think that like we see it throughout the tech industry, it's hard to be a company above a certain size without developing an in-house value practice nowadays. And we see that those people become involved in all the big deals and then they go, they start to use technology in order to get to every deal. So we see that thing growing. And as you said, we see it actually uh, shaking hands with the customer success organization because based on value realization, you can both help customer success with their renewals and you can actually learn better how to position your value to the new buyers and so on. So we see a lot of handshake between value engineers, sales engineers, customer success people, and SDRs uh, that, that, that's happening nowadays pretty much everywhere. Yeah. So do they, where, where do the value engineers report up these days? In what or typically, typically the CRO, I would say. Okay, but yeah, is that- Usually they report into the CRO, usually. A pre-sales, kind of into a, like a pre-sales leader, traditionally? No, I, what, the ones we see right now are reporting into the CRO or one level below the CRO. Uh, but into a sales leader, um, that's that's what we're seeing more than anything. And to be honest, these are amazing people that understand the business. They understand the pains of the customer. Yes. They know how to you know how to build cases. The problem is they don't scale, right? There's like five against 150. Super, super. I mean, traditionally very labor intensive, right? Very labor intensive. And so we think the future is really not eliminating those people, but but freeing them up to deal with a custom specific, very complicated deals, and then drive a more, um, a more, I would say, democratize the skill set for standard deals for the rest of the organization. Yeah, Le leverage, leverage technology, right? Exactly. Yep. Yeah, and then now what about, uh, I forgot which order I was in here. So uh, Roy, with um, anything else you'd add in relative to now, you go through all this, you qualify, you have the deal on the table, it's kind of going through, the reps forecasting it, you know, certain time frame. So now as a leader kind of scrutinizing that uh, pipeline, anything that comes into play there? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So uh, one, of, one, of the, uh, one of the great CROs, a guy named Adnan, uh, basically told us, he's, he was one of our first customers, uh, CRO, and he told us, if, if, a, if a member of my team puts a deal from upside to commit, uh, and we have a month and a half or two months to the end of the quarter, and they're at 50% of the discovery, there's no way this deal is coming in. Like, I'm not going to commit this yeah. deal. And so for him, it was the ability to judge a deal more objectively than just the, you know, the, the, the confidence of the rep or what the rep has said they've done. But if the discovery is not where it should be, if they did, didn't build a value uh, case for the deal, 
there's no way to commit it if they bring it from upside to commit. That was like, for me, that was a wow moment to say, okay, th this is an x-ray into the pipeline he didn't have before. Wow, that's great. So tough, you know, you, you know, these things really should be doing all the time, but you, know, you, had, you, had, a, you had a lot of people during, uh, you know, COVID where you kind of had the fish were hopping in the boat. And, you know, now, especially a lot, a lot of the younger sellers, are like, oh my God, this is so hard, right? So yeah, you got to do all the fundamentals, but you know, in the tough economy, some of the things we've uh, you know, mentioned here, CFO is a lot more involved. How are you going to make sure you got your value selling pitch down? How are you arming your champion? You have people that are falling in love with you, you're good with. For those that you haven't met, how do you make sure you got the bases covered there? You know, leveraging this value, you know, value engineer role, and it's labor intensive. So if you can automate it with a tool like Spotlight AI, that's awesome. And then ultimately making sure there's discipline to, you know, scrutinize the pipeline to make sure it's not a bunch of crap. Because then if your you know, ass is on the line, especially as a leader, um, you know, it doesn't happen, then obviously a lot of uh, bad things can happen. Uh, uh, Nadav? Yep. Wanted to add that, that beyond everything you said, there's another important component, which is that the market is always changing. Your competition is changing. Your product offering sometimes change. Your positioning sometimes change. People in the organization change all the time. That's the reality of things. And we feel that even organizations that have a value sales practice find it really hard to keep on top of the constant changing positions right. uh, in, in every element of life. And part of what we've tried to do is a system that makes it really easy for them. Because as Roy said, we have AI and the system keep adjusting itself to the changes in the marketplace. Be it, again, the soft value changes like differentiators and, and, and pains and so on, and the hard value changes like what's the cost of doing this or the cost of doing that. So the system is learning. That's one component. But the second component is that we've built very, very, very easy uh, self-service capabilities for the system that enable value leaders to actually make changes in a heartbeat. And then it goes out to any discovery, to any proposal, to any presentation for a buyer. So part of, I think the problem is really staying adapting to changes. And, and again, that, that's another very important attribute that we were trying to address with Spotlight. Awesome. And uh, we, we have a, a plant in here. So Alex says, uh, how do you quantify value? How does this change the current uh, economic climate? I, th I think we've addressed it, uh, uh, addressed a, a bunch of that, Alec, but uh, I'm sure you can connect with uh, Roy and uh, Nadav offline or w w watch the other, other part of the podcast. But if you have something else you want to chime in with, Alec, please feel free. So again, thanks. Uh, questions, comments, feel free to keep them coming. So we're uh, getting toward the tail end here. So uh, I've kind of a, a lightning round. Uh, so maybe just some shorter answers um, and we have some kind of generic things we, we always ask. So, uh, Roy, uh, advice for people breaking into tech sales. Find the best um, coach you can get as a manager. If you, if you get the right manager, your, 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 uh, you know, your career is on the right track. Coaching, really important. And, and you got to be coachable, right? You know, some people may or may not want to give feedback if you're the individual contributor. So, Alec, you know, hopefully you know from Nadav and Roy what you need to do different or better to improve. If you don't have that in writing and you've not had that discussion and they're not doing it to you, I'd strongly recommend you do it. And at the same time, they should say, hey, Alec, do you have any feedback for me? And if they don't say it, you can say, hey, on the podcast, Randy said I should give you some feedback. You're okay if I give you some feedback. So just think about what that does to kind of ra raise the bar in the culture. And I'll see you. I, I see you laughing. <laughs> exactly. And, uh, and, and, and big shout out with that question to Keith Butler, uh, whom I worked with one of the better coaches to his team and, and the executive team. And, uh, you know, you always need to remember who you are learning from. Awesome. And uh, Nadav, any one nugget you'd have advice for people breaking into tech sales? Yeah, I think that it's all about quantity and quality. So people should always be prospecting to death. Like people that are not willing to prospect to death has no room in, in sales, in my personal view. And the second thing, to always try to be really smart about why things don't work and how can we learn from it to make it work next time. So the combination of, again, improving your conversion slowly and working deliberately in debt and generating enough width in your personal pipeline, that's the very non-secret to success in that field, in my view. Awesome. Yeah, my, uh, I do that uh, weekly 
um, I don't know what you call it on, uh, on, on LinkedIn, the uh, you know weekly write up around, uh, I might be old school, but in this one, I call it warm calling, which is basically, obviously we know what cold calling is, but warm calling as I define it really is okay. When you're talking to somebody, so, you know, Alec, if you're talking to a prospect or customer, you know, every single call, are you saying, Hey, is there anybody else that you know that you'd recommend that I should be reaching out to? Uh, anybody else in the area or industry or, you know, somebody else that you think can use it. So if you're calling and saying, hey, um, uh, Roy recommended I give you a call, blah, 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 you know, your hit, hit rate's going to be much better. So cold calling, absolutely, but warm, warm calling is really good too. And then uh, ne next one, Roy, uh, what about advice for those impacted by recent layoffs in tech sales? Yeah, that's a, that's a, obviously, you know, anybody could be smart and give an advice to those who get, <laughs> who get laid off, but um, at the end of the day, uh, this is this is part of uh, part of going through the journey, right? The economy is going to go through cycles. You're going to get some take some hits. I think uh, I think the important thing is to keep developing yourself. So as you're looking for the next job, yeah. find where you need to develop, develop yourself, uh, find the right coaches, the right books, the right content, uh, and come to the next job more prepared and, and better skilled. Absolutely, uh, Nadav. Same to you. Advice for those impacted by recent layoffs. My heart is with them, and we see we see many people changing jobs right now, and that storm is going to weather at some point. Uh, yeah, I don't have any better advice. There you go. Uh, so I also mentioned the book, so I had to grab it on my bag. So Tucker can put the link up. Uh, I'm biased, of course, with a great book, your go-to sales advisor. Uh, you can literally open it up and pick – pick a page and great write up uh, a lot of different things. Uh, so thanks for posting that uh, Tucker salescommunity.com slash book. Uh, Greg, thanks for saying thank you. Great session. Um, so a couple other things here we will squeeze in. Uh, so Roy, what about the importance of uh, kind of sales ops and rev ops these days? What do you think? So we, we've uh, obviously Nadav and I have been, uh, uh, you know, when we're selling into these teams, we see all types of rev ops and sales ops. Um, the, 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 the rock stars are actually the ones driving the ship, to be honest. And so, um, you know, they're not the leaders, but they're driving. They're the, they're the driver behind the wheel and they're, they're enabling the engine to run. Uh, they're putting fuel in and they're adding more engines. And so I think the, the, the really strong ones are not, are not technical people that just, you know, build reports and dashboards. Those, those, those are sort of the, that's the first layer of, of, of uh, tactical support. But the strategic ones really understand where the organization needs to move to and uh, puts the right infrastructure in place to get them there. And so we sell to these guys as well because the, the, the most strategic ones, they look at Spotlight or other tools and they say, this is what's going to get us from A to B, right? And we're going to bring the CRO to, to look at this and understand how we're going to get there. And, uh, and those are the, the strong ones that we've seen. Great. And uh, Nadav, any uh, sales tools you like uh, in particular these days? Uh, a whole bunch of them. We see a lot of success with Clary. We see a lot of success with Gong. Uh, we see more and more sales team uh, using Slack. Of course, there is a bunch of value engineering uh, tools that could be used. We, we've tried to come up with the next generation, but again, the problem, programmatic value sales motion we see that it's really important uh of course outreach another tool that automate uh, the lead gen tech target and generation of high quality leads uh based on customer intent and the list goes on and on awesome perfect uh lots of great ones there for sure uh gong and outreach uh, especially involved with the sales community so i'll give a shout out to them uh, and then Erico says, don't leave home without your copy of Sales Advisor. So uh, thanks, really, Eric. Really good. thanks, Eric, for that. So uh, what are, Roy, uh, uh, probably obvious questions, but uh, any uh, predictions for the sales tech stack space? Yeah, so I, I, think, I think we're at an inflection point. We're at an inflection point where both um, uh, conversational AI and general AI uh, are going to become sort of advisors, uh, artificial advisors to reps. Uh, we're definitely riding this wave, uh, but you know, uh, one of the uh, uh, one of the CROs told me they want to see the next generation of tools become like a 
like a chief product and a chief marketing officer sitting next to them and whispering in their ear, you know, what, what are the pains we're after? What are the signals we're after? How do we drive a value sale discussion based on the strategy of the company? And, and it's not just about automating tasks. It's about whispering in the reps ear on where they need to look and what they need to look for and what they need to ask for. Mm -hmm. uh, and so those, that's going to be the next generation of tools. The, the, the rep will become assisted and sort of orchestrating this assistance of tools to become much more effective. Awesome. Great. Well, uh, time flies when you're having fun. So I uh, just want to thank you guys. Great session on uh, certainly value selling, some great insights into your company's spotlight.ai and uh, lots of great nuggets in terms of uh, how to sell during this uh, downturn and kind of how, yeah, how do you get the CFO to say, yes, I, I want to buy from you. So all, all really, really good. So uh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Randy. Thank you. And thank you everyone watching. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, so next week, it's episode 120. Uh, it'll be Wednesday, April 12th. Uh, Rohan, uh, who's the founder and CEO of Copilot, a cool company. His title is going to be uh, AI in the future of tech sales. So AI is certainly coming to play here uh, a lot more and uh, you know, a lot of different ways. Uh, really, really fascinating. So um, again, thank you, uh, Roy Nadav and Spotlight. Uh, again, if those uh, of you that are members of Sales Community, thanks. If you're not, uh, you can go to salescommunity.com and uh, you'll see a link that says spring free or just click on the one that Tucker had posted previously. And uh, as always, Tucker, thanks for your help uh, behind the scenes. So everybody have a great day and uh, appreciate it. <laughs>